Uh, now, you haven't heard about the, the Make a Difference Awards. It's our way of celebrating the people who are going above and beyond to raise funds for the charity or maybe a good cause and to improve the lives of individuals or indeed the community around them. Well, the finalists in each of the eight categories have been chosen by a panel of judges. And this week, we've been meeting those who are in the community group. Delighted to say that with me this afternoon is Phil Roberts, uh, founder and chief executive of Journeymen, a group based on the Whittle. And uh, we'll hear, as we'll hear, provide support to men. They might be struggling a bit, these fellas, with anxiety, depression or loneliness. And with Phil... Uh, is Journeyman Ambassador Pauline Daniels as well. Welcome home, Pauline, first of all. And hiya, Phil, how are you doing? Hi, Sean, thanks yeah. for having us. Lovely to be here. By the way, quick tip if you want to keep cool, get your kit off, get in a tin bath full of ice. It works for me. But I'm not sending not you a photo. <laughs> <laughs> get in a tin bath with your kit off. You've got photos of that anyway. You know what someone said? Put your duvet in the fridge. Have you tried? Can't get a tin, tin of salmon in our fridge. Put your duvet in the fridge. <laughs> It's a good so idea, though. I tell you what, you could put you. You know, this is true. Put your under underwear in the freezer for a little bit, and then put it on. Honest, it works. Pauline, yeah, for your works. underwear, it has to be a big freezer. Oh, he's, <laughs> isn't he cheeky? <laughs> this is all about. This is all about journey, men. When was this set up, Phil? Tell us about it. Um, we, I, I set it up in uh, twenty twenty. Um, and um, my history was I was from a police background uh, and I seen uh, people were struggling with the mental health um, and when I looked at it I did a report and uh, the mental health was a bit one sided uh, there was support for women and we've got a lovely and amazing place on, on the world called mm. Tomorrow's, uh, Tomorrow's Women but there was no nothing for the fellas us fellas at all at the time we had quite a lot of suicides as well and a lot of them were men uh, as well and it, it was just horrible to think that the, the last thing they they had to do was to kill themselves wow. uh, so as a result of that long story short i uh, looked at setting a company up just to help the men off the whittle and link into all the other services and one thing about the whittle and beyond now um the, there's a lot of services that can help that actually care I mean, was this difficult? Because you set this up just, just as COVID was starting, didn't you? <sighs> sure. You know what? That was my luck. Um, and for me to go all the way through, uh, you know, on the on the final day of when we were going to open, uh, I took my uh, directors, we went to Gallagher's pub in Birkenhead, mm. just as Boris was announcing he was closing the, the country down on the Monday. Yeah. So, but if there was ever a time... Of course. Um, to have a men's mental health hub or any mental health hub, it was there and then. It was a scary time. It couldn't um, have been a better time, really, for, well, to, for someone to talk to and to turn to, couldn't I it? I know. Well, well, that was it. Uh, a lot of the doors and a lot of organisations were closed down. Uh, you couldn't get hold of a doctor. Uh, it wasn't their fault. It was just like, mm, the way course, it happened. Absolutely. It was closed down overnight. But we did uh, stuff. We come onto Radio My Side and we, we did stuff on Radio My Side. We did some media stuff. And then the phone started ringing. Uh, and it hasn't stopped since. God. So what help and support do GNE men offer then? I mean, it's, is it a, a listening ear? Is it physical help? Or what do you do? It's a bit of everything. Um, we do everything. It's non-clinical, so it's not like going to your doctors mm. and, you know, it's uh, white walls and everything clinical. We invite them in. But during COVID, we had to do a lot of stuff outside because we couldn't have them inside. Uh, we did everything in social uh, distancing. Even the likes of counselling, we had to think on our feet. Um, and we did walking counselling. Uh, bring your dog, uh, meet. And all, all counselling is talking to each other. We've got a wonderful counsellor at Journeyman called Peter. And he's uh, he's counselled all the way through um, uh, the pandemic and beyond. Um, so the likes of the stuff that we do is let's, we've been told to stay in for the last two years. We do everything outside. Um, we do like last week we were on the narrowboats. Uh, we've got two narrowboats that we go out on, so the fellas can we get them out of the likes of Liverpool or Birkenhead, mm. take them to um, the likes of Cheshire, uh, and get them excited, get them working as part of a team, doing the locks with us, change the scenery, yeah. bit of fresh air. And, you know, having a laugh. We do bingo on there, and we we have a laugh. Um, we do football, uh, fishing is a big thing. Getting a, a row of men in a line. Even if they don't catch anything, it's amazing because they're out in the fresh air. They're not sitting in a pub on a Saturday afternoon. 
And, uh, and not only that, I mean, you, you're talking here with people who you, you think it's only you at times in situations yeah. like this, don't you? When you're talking to people who are in the same boat, if you'll pardon the pun, mm -hmm. um, it, it helps that way, doesn't it? So how did you get involved, Pauline? Um, well, I met Phil. Um, I, I can't really tell you how I met him. I wasn't in a cell, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it was at another radio station I met Phil. And um, they Leon, who's a, another director, asked me to be an ambassador. So um, I went along and had a look. I liked greatly what I'd seen because I am involved with Tomorrow's Women Wirral and was well aware that, uh, I'm not saying that there's enough out there for women, there isn't, but that over in Birkenhead, there's like a, it's a great, it's an absolutely brilliant organisation that looks after women. But I could see the need for the men. And as you know, I mean, I've always been known for like knocking men down, mm. like, you know, like nine pins, but... This was like really, really, uh, really important to me. So I went along, became an ambassador. And then recently I've actually become an official volunteer. So um, I, I met the men bit by bit, one by one. And I've become, I mean, I actually say, you know, I, I, I look forward to, we do a chit and chat on a Monday. Mm. Uh, if they can get a word in edgeways. And um, <laughs> <laughs> we sit and we gab and we laugh and we talk about absolutely everything. And we play games, we have quizzes. The other week we went to Eastern Woods uh, and had um, a cup of coffee and looked out on the viewing platform, and but still talking. And then on a Wednesday, I've just finished me walk and talk training. So uh, on a Wednesday, we go and walk and talk. That could be Seacombe Ferry. It could be Birkenhead Park. It could be, it could be anywhere. Um, and we've just got a van, which is great, because my next trip with them, and I keep saying this, is Parkgate for Fish and Chips. But um, it's... It's lovely to meet them. It's lovely to get to know them. It was a bit difficult at first because sometimes the lads had, had asked me things and I thought, I, I don't really know that. So I found out mm. and I've been on a couple of courses and it's just really important and I just find it, I find it really nice to be able to help even though I'm not like massively, you yeah, but know. You, you'll know when having a foot in both camps. Is, is it more difficult to men for men to open up rather than the women? Yeah, totally. Yeah, women like me is proof. You know, we'll talk about anything till the cows mm. come home. Whereas lads, particularly if it's a health thing, they find it very difficult to talk about, and obviously they find it difficult to talk about relationships as well. So it takes a while for them to gain your trust, and particularly what what's great is they actually accepted me immediately mm. as a woman. Um, so there's all these fellas and me and, um, and there's Joy who works in the office as well. And all of a sudden, you know, I was accepted by these, by these men who didn't know, who I, well, they did know. Who yeah, I but you've got the people. ability as well to use comedy as a tool. I mean, it's a powerful thing, isn't it? Yeah. And which you know. is what I, I like to think that's what I do. When yeah. I go on a Monday and a Wednesday, I make them laugh. Yeah. And it brings an awful lot of them. I mean, I, when I first went, there were some lads who hardly said a word. And now you can't shut them up and it's great. It's, it's just a really nice feeling to know that you've helped that happen. Mm. It's great. I love it. So what sort of feedback are you getting, Phil, and the, from the people who go? You know what? It's great. So, well, the feedback I love is just the smiles on the faces yeah. um, as well. That says a lot to me. Mm. For the men to come along, as uh, Pauline said then, uh, you can see them uh, when they first come on day one. They're at the back off the like the walk and talk or whatever group we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then you can see them steadily moving up, getting involved, laughing and joking, talking about football, religion, politics, whatever, just getting involved. Um, and one thing that we've done with our men as well, we've invested in them. Like we've got a, a lad called uh, Des. Uh, he come to us as one of our men, completed his journey, then volunteered for us. And now he's working for, uh, for Journeymen uh, really? full time. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's not on any benefits and he's got a decent wage. Uh, but that lived experience is so powerful as well. So, so yeah. what about numbers? Are numbers uh, down from when COVID was on, or are there more coming along now? Um, no. Is it, there really? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's still steady. Uh, COVID, uh, since we've opened, we've had uh, about 560 men uh, oh, come really? through our, uh, our doors. Because nobody uh, else was opening, nobody yeah, else was yeah. giving that service. So no. journeymen were the only ones out there. And uh, obviously, if you've had a great like sort of experience with somewhere, you tell other people, yeah. which is great. 
And, and you both said it, talking to people, it's such a, it's such a big thing, yeah. isn't it's it? It's a big thing, mm. but it's a simple thing. I, yeah. In my head, I like things simple, but just talking. Counselling, to me, is, is talking therapy. You haven't got to be trained, just listening, understanding. And if you don't know the answers, we've now got this massive network of people that we can rely on. We're commissioned now by the NHS as well which is a big thing uh, for us as well. So we get uh, cases passed over from us mm. uh, to us from the NHS as well. Do you think it would work as a mixed group? Uh, no. No? No, I don't think it would, no. I, I think it's important that it, it remains as it is because um, I, I think men feel, I mean, they, they sort of accept me because they know I'm a bit of a nutter. But, you know, if if... I think if you started bringing women in, they'd start to close. They'd yeah, go back into this mean. shell, yeah, it's a good and because uh, a lot of our men have had relationship problems, yeah. and you know that in their mind is women's fault, and and vice versa. Of yeah, course, yeah, of course. But that's a hurdle you've got to get over. I mean, if yeah. you go to tomorrow's women, Wirral, uh, I remember sending Frank there once with some clothes. They were doing a car boot sale, and I sent him with a big. Um, a bin bag full of clothes and they wouldn't let him in because they won't let a man in. No. They won't let a man over the doorstep because the women don't feel safe if there's a man in the building. And I think uh, it's not the men aren't like that, but yeah. what they are is they just feel safer in their own skin well, if there isn't that's women. That's what it's about yeah. then, isn't it? Yeah. No. So, Jane, made it to the finals of the, the Make a Difference Awards in Woo-hoo. the community uh, group category. It's a big thing, this. Congratulations. How did it feel when you heard the news? Oh, you know what? It was brilliant. Um, and we're so proud. Uh, Radio Mayor side have been brilliant uh, to me and to Jane, who went from day one, and to get recognised uh, for that, uh, you know, by the, the, the listeners and also our community. We were all so proud. Very, very proud. I mean, I know you don't do it for that, but it is nice to, um, to get an accolade, you know, to, to, to be selected. Oh, it's wonderful. It's yeah. 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 isn't it? It's you know? absolutely wonderful. Because, I mean, yeah. I host the Women of the Year Awards, and a lot of the women who come along, you know, they... they 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 don't they don't foster eight hundred children because they want someone to give them an award, course, you know. Yeah. I mean, but it, it's it's just nice for someone to say thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're right. You don't know you don't hear about these people. No, nope. they're never on the front of the echo. No, nope. these mm. people who do good for the for the community, very very rarely end of the paper for that matter. So, how much would it mean if you actually go on to win the community award on the thirtieth of September at the Make a Difference Awards? I would love it. Uh, all all. Be- only because the last two and a half years, it's it's been a whirlwind, um, and to celebrate with with my staff, but also our men uh, and our community. Uh, it's not just Jenny Men who are going to win this; it's the whole of the community. Yeah. So it'll be so special. It would I, be I, amazing. I think it's great to have you as an ambassador as well. Do you? I do. It's oh. good. Well, it is. Rather than you know, rather than a man, I think it breaks down a lot of barriers yeah. when you go yeah. in. And as I say, you've got the ability to make people laugh, which is paramount in situations like I'm that. I'm also trying at the moment. Well, I am setting up some events because obviously this is all new to the lads. Mm. So I mean, we've got our first Christmas ball coming off in uh, at the end of November, mm. and so I've been organising that. And, and what was so funny was the other week I was talking to Leon and he was saying, so what time, we're looking at the tickets, so what time are the carriages? And he's lot looked at us as if to say, what's up with them two? <laughs> and I'm going, oh, carriages are 12. And they go, well. <laughs> yeah. But, so, yeah, so we're doing that. And we're also going to uh, Carden Park to set up a golf day. Wow. Um, because golf days, as we all know, raise an awful lot of money. And, but the important thing is, it's not all about raising money. It's about raising the awareness that we're there and raising the awareness about mental health and yeah. men's problems yeah it's good but listen congratulations great to see you both that's phil roberts chief executive jenny men and pauline of course uh, ambassador extraordinaire the best of luck great to see you and, uh, thank you sean keep in touch thanks Lou.